The Kalunda Dry Steppe in the Altai Krai region in western Siberia is one of the largest agrarian landscapes in temperate zones. 420,000 square kilometers of the Soviet Union were converted from natural steppe to intensive agriculture during the 1960s. The naturally fertile soils with high organic matter favor large-scale agricultural production. The Kalunda steppe rates amongst the regions with the highest contents of soil organic carbon worldwide, so it's a significant global carbon sink, mitigating climate change. Since the collapse of the Soviet Union, this region has gained increasing importance as the breadbasket of the Russian Federation. Agriculture is characterized by large-scale intensive farming based on monocultures. But inappropriate land use and poor management on this steppe has led in turn to widespread degradation. Wind erosion leads to loss of fertile topsoils, accompanied by a decrease in soil organic matter and loss of carbon. During fallow periods, after harvesting and before the crops cover the land, bare soils also lose water through evaporation. To make matters worse, recurrent drought periods further decrease water availability and accelerate land degradation. In turn, farmers are affected by unreliable yields and overall low and declining productivity. Farming has become unattractive and is being abandoned. Young people are migrating in search of other job opportunities. Globally, the region is losing its function as a carbon sink. It's no longer so effective in mitigating climate change. What can be done to prevent further degradation in the Kalunda steppe, while at the same time stabilizing and improving yields? One initiative taken was to test sustainable intensification using no-till and minimum tillage techniques. This was then compared with conventional tillage. No-till means growing crops year upon year without disturbing the soil with the plough. The field surface remains covered with residue and stubble left from the previous season. Specialized no-till equipment then opens a narrow slot in the unplowed soil. The slot is just wide enough to insert the seeds. Similarly, minimum tillage, also referred to as non-inversive tillage, is a method that doesn't turn the soil over, but it does permit a minimum of soil disturbance to loosen up hard or compacted topsoil before planting. No or minimal soil disturbance and leaving part of the crop residues as mulch on the soil surface all lead to improved soil structure and aggregate stability. The result? Infiltration is increased, wind and water erosion are minimized. At the same time, loss of valuable water by evaporation is reduced. Compared to conventional tillage, these improved practices increase soil organic matter by 30 to 50% and available soil water by about 30%. Better structure, more organic matter and more soil moisture all lead to improved activity of soil microorganisms, which play a key role in soil fertility. In addition, growing different crops in rotation ensures, first, a high degree of soil coverage, second, reduced water losses, third, improved fertility and better pest control. In trials with sustainable intensification, instead of leaving a so-called black fallow where the soil is left bare during a season, rapeseed and nitrogen-fixing peas were grown. It was found that these provided nutrients, leaf cover and led to improved soil structure. All in all, minimum and no tillage in the Kalunda steppe showed great benefits in terms of maintaining or improving soil fertility and use of scarce rainfall. Hence, improving productivity and minimizing the danger of further land degradation. But there are objections to no-till and minimum tillage. The main complaint is the proliferation of weeds, which often then leads to an increase in herbicide use. One answer is to use infrared detection technologies with high precision by applying herbicides only where weeds are growing. Another interesting machine that we tested was a sprayer, which is equipped with a system that determines weeds by color. The sprayer makes it possible to use herbicides economically. It substantially reduces expenditure on herbicides. 
and it also fulfills an ecological function, which I consider to be very important as well. Most important to the farmer is the fact that no till and minimum tillage provide higher economic benefits. They can increase yields by 25% and yields are also becoming more reliable. One of the great advantages of minimum and no tillage is that they require less labor and machine hours for the preparation of the fields before planting. The higher yields and reduced costs lead to increased farm income. I believe that the farm's profitability has grown since we introduced the new technologies. I cannot calculate how much. The cereal price goes up or down, and that makes it hard to access the technology's economic performance. But the technologies are there, and they enable us to obtain higher yields. The overall volume of yields increases. The technology means fuel savings. In my opinion, it's responsible for the increase in productivity. The hope is that higher income from the land will increase the attractiveness of the agriculture to young farmers. They will see a future in agriculture and remain in the rural areas instead of migrating to the cities. Given the large surface area in western Siberia, the choice of land use will affect wheat production in the breadbasket of the Russian Federation. There is an urgent need to improve and share knowledge to promote attractive and better land management. Land users need not only to turn away from the plough, but also to optimize their use of machinery and chemical inputs. The choice of the land use will also have an effect on the global climate. Scientific investigations prove that conventional ploughing leads to severe carbon losses. On the other hand, no till or minimum tillage can significantly reduce this carbon loss and thus reduce global warming. All in all, there is an untapped potential for the Kalunda region to contribute to climate change mitigation at the global level.